All right, let's talk about Frank Clark's generous move to a very tragic situation. An eight-year-old kid in Arizona raising money for 15 and the Mahomies, Baker Mayfield speaking out, Derek Carr's contract extension, and much more. But first, how about those? What's up, everybody? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs and the NFL overall. So make sure to sub if you're new around here, hit that like button, and let's jump into this news. Starting off light because things do Get a bit heavy today. Juan Thornhill is asking for golf lessons on Twitter. He asks, anybody got me with the golf lessons back in KC? I'm trying to be like Tiger Woods in his prime. Well, of course, he gets a bunch of responses, quite possibly from people who don't even know how to play golf. And I found this response fitting and very funny. You now have about 10 people to pick from. By morning, it'll be 50, 60 random guys asking you to hang out. 20 will give you advice on improving your football game. Five thirst traps. And who knows how many many Chiefs trolls telling you how awful you are. I'm a check back. And this comment is funny to me because it accurately depicts how wild Twitter can be at times. But hey, any golfers out there want to help Juan get to prime Tiger Woods status, hit him up. And then here's a few more off-season workout photos of Mahomes and company getting this work in. MVS is confirmed locked in as well as many others. And I also see that yesterday was Josh Gordon's birthday. So hey, happy belated birthday to Josh Gordon. His birthday is a day after mine and two days after CEH's, which is pretty cool. He's had quite the roller coaster of an NFL career, but I am glad and happy to see he's back at it and wish him the best for this upcoming season. And here's something else you didn't know that you needed in your life, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Juju Smith-Schuster and others catch footballs mid jump into a swimming pool that's right they made a fun game out of it and i'm here to bring you all the very important news over here in chiefs kingdom and then let's talk about joshua kando here for a moment are the chiefs expecting bigger and better things from him this upcoming offseason he was drafted by the chiefs last year in the fourth round 144th overall and only appeared in three regular season games for the chiefs last season he spent most of the season buried in the depth chart or on ir with a high ankle sprain. He's a pretty raw player who has potential, but the question is, will he be ready this season? Jordan Foote from Arrowhead Report on Sports Illustrated says this, as Kando is set to enter year two, though, the same pros and cons surrounding his game remain. On one hand, he's an athletic specimen who tested off the charts and possesses high-end bend, general flexibility, and explosiveness. Those traits are commonly found in edge prospects outside the top 100 or 50. On the other hand, Kando remains a giant ball of clay. From an in-game learning standpoint, that ball of clay is still in the same state it was a year ago. Kando didn't end up breaking through despite a less than stellar group of players around him, and the injury rendered his debut campaign mostly incomplete. There are no new answers in regards to his short or long-term role with the Chiefs. It's extremely unclear what the Chiefs' plans are for Kando. He could either be the team's best-kept secret ahead of a season that desperately needs an improved pass rush, or he could be a fourth-round swing that results in the batter... Brett Veach, wishing he had another shot at getting things right. Kando's blend of athleticism and upside makes now an intriguing time for Kansas City to unleash him and see what happens, but their desperation for top shelf production eliminates that opportunity. So what do you guys think about Joshua Kando? Will he show enough improvement and be able to claw his way up the depth chart this season? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. It certainly is an interesting time for the Chiefs and specifically the defensive line of the Chiefs. And then Charles Goldman from Chiefs Wire recently put out an article talking about Clyde Edwards Hilaire's fifth year option since he was a first round pick. So that decision is going to be coming up in 2023. And in short, this is Brett Veach's first round pick in his tenure as GM of the Chiefs. Fresh off a national championship win with LSU, expectations were high for Edwards Hilaire right off the bat. Unfortunately, the running back has fallen well short of those expectations. We know he's battled injuries, multiple bouts of them. In fact, an ankle sprain, hip injury season one, another ankle sprain the following season, as well as an MCL sprain. And then on top of that a shoulder injury as well. So this certainly is a make or break season for CEH in my opinion. We honestly need his value to rise this year if we want to get anything out of him in a trade, if that's the route we decide to go, or if he stays healthy and plays well enough and absolutely even balls out, will we keep him around for a fifth year option? He has to stay healthy. He has to go in this season. What do you guys think? If he does ball out, Fifth year option, trade him, 
release him. Let me know your thoughts, though I think I know a lot of them, at least for right now. And then in some tragic, yet generous news from Chiefs defensive end Frank Clark. His foundation is doing its part to help honor a St. Louis, Missouri teen who tragically passed away at an amusement park on March 24th. 14-year-old Tyree Sampson succumbed to his injuries after falling from the Orlando Freefall Ride at Icon Park in Orlando, Florida. The ride is known as, quote, the world's tallest freestanding drop tower. And upon doing a little bit more research, it looks like this kid's harness wasn't properly secured and he fell. And the whole thing is extremely tragic. Samson was an aspiring football athlete and had the dream to play professional football in the NFL. And when Clark heard about Samson's story, he was moved to action, pledging to help the family cover funeral costs. After hearing about Samson from his mother, Nikia Dodd, sorry if I messed that name up, Clark's foundation came up with a plan to ensure his legacy would live on. Frank Clark shared this last night via his Instagram. Quote, when I heard of the tragic passing of Tyree Sampson, I knew I needed to do something to help his family. I can't imagine the hurt and loss that his family and loved ones are experiencing, but I wanted to relieve some of that pain, worry, and stress of the media by covering the cost of Tyree's funeral so that his family could celebrate and honor him. When talking with Nakia, Tyree's mom, I had the pleasure of learning about the many accomplishments of Tyree, his passion for football, basketball, how gentle his heart was, and his big appetite for loving people. I made a promise to her that Tyree's legacy would live on. In honor of such a wonderful son, brother, friend, and student athlete whose life was cut short, we are establishing the Tyree Sampson Scholarship Fund for inner city incoming college freshmen. On behalf of everyone at the Frank Clark Family Foundation, I would like to offer our sincerest sympathies. Frank Clark and Frank Clark Family Foundation. So yes, this is a very sad, very tragic ordeal all around, but a very generous move made by Frank Clark. Whatever you think of him about being back on the Chiefs, whether you wanted him gone, don't like his play, whatever, this is an awesome move regardless. And then an eight-year-old kid named Luke, a second grader at Tarwater Elementary School in Chandler, Arizona, is a fan of the Chiefs because his father, who travels for work, often visits Kansas City. Not long ago, he brought Luke a Patrick Mahomes t-shirt and a new Chiefs fan was born. This is what he says, the other teams have good players too, but the Chiefs have the most good players, and that's why I really like them. It looks like for a Black History Month project, Project, Luke completed a research project about Patrick Mahomes where he was introduced to his foundation, 15 and the Mahomies. He told his teacher that when he grows up, he would like to do a charity and the teacher said, you don't have to be an adult. You can do that right now. So Luke got to work, recorded a commercial with his classmates asking for pennies for a donation to Mahomes' foundation. And between those donations from classmates and some grown-ups, Luke ended up with a $500 check to send to 15 and the Mahomies. And ironically, Luke's classroom at his school is classroom number 15. So it honestly looks like it was all meant to be. Luke said that he hopes Patrick Mahomes hears about the work his school has done and that maybe, just maybe, he will pay him a visit in Arizona. Well, I don't think Mahomes has visited Arizona yet, but he did see this story and retweeted it on Twitter saying this is awesome. So yeah, let's go Luke. Great job, little man. Keep that mentality up. Generosity with your time, with your talents and your treasure, and it will take you far in life, I promise. In other NFL news, former Chiefs cornerback Steven Nelson will head to his fourth NFL team with a brand new two-year deal signed on Wednesday with the Houston Texans. This deal could reach up to 10 million over the two-year span of the contract. He was drafted by the Chiefs in 2015 and played here until 2018, then played for Pittsburgh, the Eagles, and now the Texans. And he's an interesting topic to me because apparently he did not like it here in KC and repeatedly told fans on Twitter that he didn't like it. He never wanted to be here in the first place and that he was glad he was gone. I can't personally imagine he didn't enjoy at least some of his time here in KC or at least our barbecue, but hey, I could be wrong. Either way though, I wish him the best in his next chapter with the Texans. And then the initial waves of free agency have come and gone and Stefan Gilmore remains available. Well, he might have found a fit in Indianapolis as he visited the Colts on Wednesday. We will see how that ends up going. I know that is someone the Chiefs have reportedly been in conversations with, Stephon Gilmore and Bradbury, but 
hey, he's visiting the Colts, so we will see how that ends up going. And then Browns QB Baker Mayfield recently spoke on the You Never Know podcast, and he didn't hide any of his displeasure regarding the Browns' decision to replace him with Deshaun Watson. This is what he had to say. I, no, I, I feel disrespected, 100%, mm. because I was told one thing, and they completed another. That's what I'm in the middle of right now. And you know what? Okay, I got, I got my taste of it because I've had four different head coaches in four years, a bunch of different coordinators. Talk about the highs. They always come back. They always come back. But I've had great times my rookie year. I didn't start in the beginning. I came in and got to have fun in the back half of the year. 2019 sucked. 2020 was great, made the playoffs. 2021 was miserable. He had injuries and all that. He goes on to say Seattle could be a good landing spot for him, but that he honestly has no clue what's next for him. He did say that he has no regrets on his time in Cleveland. I really, truly, honestly have no regrets of my time in Cleveland of what I tried to give to that place. Right. And true Clevelanders and true Browns fans know. That's why I can walk away from the whole situation feeling like I did. The highlight of this to me was George Kittle commenting to ask if the dog in the video was okay. It just laid there on his back like that for quite a while, which is pretty funny. Mahomes also enjoyed Kittle's comment, as did many others. Anyway, we will see if Mayfield ends up in Seattle. I'm not really sure there, but could you guys imagine if he doesn't land a starting role for the 2022 season? Another interesting scenario that could play out is the Browns end up keeping him around to start during Deshaun Watson's suspension that is very likely coming. Very interesting times for Baker Mayfield indeed. The Browns like organization has been a dumpster fire for many years. I mean, four head coaches in four years, multiple offensive coordinators. I mean, this is horrible. I feel for the guy, to be honest, but hey, can Deshaun Watson turn it around and right the ship of the Browns? Time will tell. And then, in some of the biggest news yesterday, QB Derek Carr and the Raiders agreed to terms on a three-year contract extension worth $121.5 million. And no, that is not a typo. This is real. The extension runs through the 2025 season, includes a no-trade clause, and he's set to earn an average of $40.5 million per year, ranking fifth among all QBs in average annual salary. That is wild. And some positives here. Carr has the fourth most passing yards in the NFL since 2018, ranking behind only Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, and Matt Ryan, and even outperforming the 2020 and 2021 NFL MVP Aaron Rodgers. And Carr has been consistently available, standing as one of the only seven quarterbacks to start 115 or more games since he was drafted in 2014. In a press conference after his extension was announced, Carr said, I've only wanted to be a Raider. And I told my agent, I said, I'm either going to be a Raider or I'm I'm going to be playing golf. Maybe he'll give Juan Thornhill lessons. I don't know. But he said, I don't want to be playing anywhere else. That's how much this place means to me. So, all right. There you have it, folks. Derek Carr is here to stay with the Raiders. And I will say this, though. The article mentions several times things like this. Carr might not be elite, but he's certainly playing at a level near that class of quarterbacks, which I found pretty funny. It kind of goes on to say he's basically a good QB, but not a great one. But... It looks like head coach Josh McDaniels really believes he's their guy and wants to keep him around. Former college teammate Devontae Adams, who they just signed to a huge deal, and his close personal friend Khalil Mack. What are your thoughts on all of this? Is Carr, in your opinion, worth getting paid that much? Fifth most in average pay for QBs? Top five QB money? Honestly, that really blows my mind. And I see a lot of people making excuses for the fact that he's had zero playoff wins in eight years and also for the fact that Travis Kelsey has as many passing TDs in the playoffs as Carr does. Yes, and I'm actually dead serious. Kelsey has one career postseason passing TD and so does Derek Carr. Don't believe me? Go look it up. I tell zero lies here. I guess you can place the blame, though, on more than just Carr for the Raiders' inability to make it to the playoffs from... Just the coaching mishaps, their inability to make it happen when it matters. And it has been tough for the Raiders when the Chiefs have been so dominant in the division for the past six or more years now. But hey, in my opinion, this is Carr's prove it year. He either proves he has what it takes when you put weapons around him, or he proves what many already think, that he's an average QB who is now extremely overpaid. What are your guys' thoughts, man? Let me know in the comments down below. I did not expect Carr to get paid this much money, but it does just show it's going up and up as far as salary cap, 
what these QBs are going to be getting paid with the Deshaun Watson thing and players in general when you're an elite player, at least like Devontae Adams and all those guys. That's not Derek Carr, though. He is not elite. But hey, he is going to be around. So maybe Chiefs fans are going to be grateful for the fact that he's around because he consistently whiffs when it matters. I don't know. We will see, guys, because he has some weapons now. This could be it for the Raiders. This could be a good year for the Raiders. We shall see. Make sure to sub for more daily news like this and check out this video here from the previous day's news in case you missed it. So until next time, let's go. Let's go. How about those? Yeah.